Hello! Evening, folks. Let me know if I'm coming through clear. Good to see you all. Hey, up to Shimera and Pony Pimp and Van Laser and Jace and Phil Fogg and Pixel Outlaw. Good to see you all. Um, yes! Right, so tonight's gonna be a bit of a different one uh, because I haven't been the one preparing it. So I got contacted after the last stream. Um, audio and video, okay. Thank you, Pony Pimp. Um, I got contacted after the last stream by, it was Pixel Outlaw, wasn't it? And um, was talking about that we should take this Voronoi stuff we did from last week and do cobblestones with it. And he made a PDF explaining how it could be done in uh, GIMP. And so I'm going to share that link with you now, actually. Okay, no, okay, first, slightly, I'm actually going to steal a few minutes of your time for something. Let me grab this hyperlink before I steal the rest of your time for, for the next two hours. Um... I would like to spam a link at you, if I can just bring up the chat again. Um, so, when I was much younger, I did a gap year out in a place called Kasizi. It's in uh, southwest Uganda. It's a phenomenal country, a phenomenal place. And I was looked after by some incredible people. Now, um, there's been a flood the other day that's caused some serious shit down in that village. Uh, again, crops buggered up, houses taken down, um, kids who are in the hospital died because the power went out. Um, if you can spend any money to send their way, it would be immensely helpful. That, that hospital is small, but it serves quite a large catchment area around there. A lot of small villages and a lot of people who wouldn't be getting access to proper healthcare without it. Um, I know the charity that that's going through. And so even though it's BT on the page, uh, British Telecom, the organ, it's all being organized by the Friends of Cassisi, I have seen their work on the ground and I can guarantee that money is actually getting to the place that you send it. Uh, I don't normally do this kind of thing, but these people mean a lot to me, so if you can spare anything, that would be awesome. And I won't take up any more of your time on these things. Right, back to the scheduled programming. Um, so yes, I have a link to send you, if I could just find it again, one second. Cobblestones. Um, and... If it would let me copy. Okay, apparently it's copied to the clipboard. There we go. Okay, so this is what I was sent. And so I'll bring it up on my screen over here. Um, so yes, the idea is we would take a, a Voronoi pattern, just the lines on the edges, and then we'd blur it a bit. Hey Barrett, how you doing? Um, and once we've blurred it, we would apply a threshold and then we get this kind of separation, these line, nice big thick lines between all, all what will become our cobblestones. So we take Voronoi, take the edges, blur them, threshold them, and then apply them back to essentially this, but with a better choice of colors. Um, and yeah, then we get to somewhere like this. Now, uh, yes, and then like taking different areas and applying noise to try and get something that looks, you know, cobblestone-y. So, um, if someone goes and makes me a lesson plan like this, it's very hard to refuse doing it. So this is our plan for day. We're gonna have to, because I wanna do some stuff in 3D as well, I want these cobblestones to be on a 3D grid. We're gonna do our lattice thing and do some displacement. But I want us to start out doing these steps because it'd be kind of cool. And it's kind of interesting because I have, I did a talk way back at, um, here in Oslo, uh, at the Kronos meetup on Keppel and there I did some um, we had a macro which let us define blur kernels so I'm going to steal some of that code and we're going to use it for some of this uh, we also have edge detection there as well so we're going to kind of jump around pull things from different places this is going to involve quite a few FBOs and I think we'll find that it'll be a bit annoying to work with them a bit a kind of crufty code so I'm expecting that next week we'll do some abstraction tidying that up and seeing if we can make some primitive that helps us when we're doing our rendering. Okay, that's the pitch. Let's get started. So, the first order of business is we need to do edge detection. We need to find the edges of all these lines. So, if I bring up the browser and I go and search for my old talk, let's see how this works. Uh, oops. If things are going to work. GitHub.com, see your baggers. And then repositories. Talk. There we go. It's the Kronos one. And I had some stuff for doing 
kernels. So where would that be? Um, maybe an example, maybe in base. Got the diff kernel in here somewhere. Tell you what, let's just search for it. Uh, def kernel. Here it is. Okay. There it was here. There's my macro. There it is. Cool. So we're going to take this. And we're going to make a new file called kernel.lisp. We're going to dump that there. And we're going to need some of the prerequisite hoo-ha for the top. Anyway, I didn't actually ask how are you all doing. I mean, it is good to see you. How are you all doing? My, my head's in funny places today, as you can imagine. So it's... Uh... And we've got a few things here we can use. So define kernel edge and define kernel Gaussian and sharpen. We won't need sharpen, but we will need these. The Gaussian or Gaussian? Gaussian? Right, so we'll start here. If I compile this macro, it's going to complain about calc edge lens. So I just need to go and steal that code as well. We'll, we'll go into what's going on here in a minute. So the idea was that I wanted to be able to write a macro where I could write just the, uh, the, the blur kernel itself or the kernel itself. And when we did macro expand, it would generate a GPU function. Um, and this is, well, of course, this is because GPU function is getting compiled into shader code. So it's going to give us a shader um, that will do what we want. So it will this, so it'll take the, the uh, current pixel and uh, multiply it by eight and then multiply all the neighboring pixels by minus one and sum all of it together. And that's what you can see here. So you've got plus all of these things. And this is reading from the various uh, places in the texture multiplied by the weight. And here is very similar, except um, when you say normalize T, it's also going to take all of these sums, just like before, and then divide it by 256 in this case, which is the sum of all of these numbers. So you're bringing it back into a certain range. Yeah, we've got a lesson plan and everything. So, um, yeah, that's what happens. People just send you stuff, which is very cool. Um, so... I actually want to be even lazier than this. I don't want to just get a GPU function. I want to get the entire pipeline um, just so we, so we can just call uh, k-edge and get edge detection. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify this macro. I'm going to say program. I'm going to, this, this is essentially a fragment shader that's being produced. So I need a vertex shader as well. It's just going to be a pass through. We're going to pass in a quad. Um, Shared verts, and so we'll do. We're going to pass in a quad and then just pass it straight through the vertex shader along with some UVs, and then the fragment shader will do stuff. We'll see you very soon. So I'm going to knock this out very quickly. So we're going to just say vert, and the second value is going to be um, that quad turned into UVs, which is plus 0.5 back to. Um, and we're going to multiply the by 0.5. So this is going to take it, if I can actually type. Yeah, this is going to take it from the minus 1 to 1 range to the 0 to 1 range. So we half its size, so it's minus 0.5 to 0.5, and then we shift it by 0.5. We're in the right place. Okay, so now we have our vertex shader and we have a fragment shader. Um, I want a different name for my fragment shader though so frag name is going to be intern format i'm going to move fairly quickly on this bit as you can see um, frag and then we'll just take the name as it's been given and so this is going to be frag name and then we're going to define a, pipe, a pipeline so Let's put our name here and then we'll say the vertex. Oh, yes, a lot of things with vertex in them. The vertex stage is going to be, what did we call it? Shared vert. Lost control of my cursor there for a second. And fragment is going to be, oh yeah, and we've got to actually 
declare the type spec2 and the fragment which is this one is going to be frag name and it as well is going to take it's going to take a vec2 i just realized some problems here uv is something we're passing in but the rest of them are uniforms oops uniform okay so this should give us now if we go and macro expand this let's uh, put this side by side not like that not like this right see now we're generating the fragment shader and the pipeline which is very cool um, we're still going to have to call this and pass it the right things so i think i'm going to mess with that as well um Oh, chat things going on. Chat things. Right, what's going on here? Phil Fogg, I'm excited to be here from the start for once. Awesome! Great to have you from the start. Hey, good to hear. Everything's well, Pixel. And everyone else. <laughs> PDF makes it look so simple. This will be done 15 minutes or so. Yeah, about that. We'll see. Um... Let's have a look. What is uh, this Voronoi thing? So basically, if you picked a load of points at random, and then you colored in all the pixels, um, depending on which point they're nearest to, you get this kind of thing. And last week, we had this really cool trick. I can actually show you. One second. Da, 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 da. With this really neat trick that we found online, um, where... If you just take a load of cones and give them random colors and move them around and let them intersect each other, you get the same thing. This is just a, an efficient way on the GPU of do oh god, I'm pointing at things again, aren't I? Sorry. Um, this is an efficient I'll point with the cursor. Hmm. Um, an efficient way of doing these Voronoi diagrams on the GPU. It's pretty cool. Yeah, and it is pretty as well. Correct. So. And this is what it looks like from the top if you're in orthographic projection. So. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, Van Laser, but from a very particular era. Like 1960s, 70s cone era. Yes. So um, let's have a look. We still need to pass things in. Ah, yes, I was going to simplify this further. I'm actually going to give, like, generate the uh, pipeline name as well. So, pline name. Pipeline. And let's put that down here. And then we are going to generate a function we can just call. That's going to do all this stuff for us. So, the only thing we should have to do is pass in uh, the sampler of the texture that we want to apply this kernel to. And then we're gonna go map G, we're gonna call uh, whatever the pipeline is called. We're gonna pass in um, a vertex stream, in which case we're gonna use the get quad stream vertex two. That's provided by Nineveh. Um, we're gonna call sampler with, it's kind of annoying that these, um, Variables are just hidden away. Hmm. No, maybe that's fine. Maybe that's fine. We'll see. Yeah, no, this, this, this is fine, actually. We're going to call sampler with the sampler we passed in. And there's a couple of other things to pass up as well. Let me just check. It's a... Uh, oh, no, it's called tex, isn't it? Tex, which is a weird name, but fine. And step, which is... How do we define step? There's probably some code I had before as well. Step. Where is it? Oh yes, this is what I did before. This will be fine, I think. We'll see. We'll just we'll paste it in and we'll see what we get. Okay. This is essentially working given the size of this viewport or what, yeah, whatever viewport we currently have. How far do we have to move to get to the next texel? So hopefully, 
if I go and do this now, what we have generated from this little macro here is this fragment shader, this pipeline that uses the fragment shader, and the function that we can call that will map a quad over that pipeline and pass in all the bits that we actually need. Let's try and compile this, and it compiles, which is exciting. And compile Gaussian as well. And now we're going to try and use it. So, it's not a great day for a uh, code layout here. Everything's a bit off to the right, but we might just have to live with it. Um, don't want to spend too much time on that. So play with Vert's Lisp. Okay. So right now we've got this stuff over here. And what I want to do is edge detection. Now this is meant to be an edge detection kernel. So what we're going to do is we're going to take everything we draw and we're going to write it into a frame buffer object. So we're going to need one of those. A frame buffer object allows us, again, it's, it's a target that we can write uh, the outputs from our pipeline into. Words defer. Um, and we'll call it first pass. Let's give me nil. And we're also going to have, we're going to need to have a sampler that lets us, uh, actually, I'll get to that in a second. Right, one second. <laughs> Push. Oh yeah, I could, I could, um, I'm pointing at things again. Awesome. I am, yeah. It's going to be a special evening. Oh yeah, I haven't actually applied the various chemicals yet. And the caffeinated water as well. Excellent. Right. Um, I will push. We'll get this first little bit working. Because the code we're starting from now is the same code as we finished with last week. This is essentially episode 15. I'll push episode 16 as soon as we get this first bit working. Uh, oh, fuck. I am now doing things on the wrong computer. Professional. It's the song of my people. Right. Okay. Um... We're going to set f the first pass to be and we, an FBO that we make. And it's going to have two attachments, a color attachment and a depth attachment. Um, we might not need both of those, but we're going to use them for now. And then we're going to set f the um, first pass sampler. Don't know why that's in caps. Um, to, well, we want the texture that's... Um, in this first attachment. So FBOs have a number of slots in them called attachments. Inside there you put things, that you put GPU arrays, texture back GPU arrays that you want to draw into. Um, so if I go uh, attachments of first pass and say zero, we're getting the first slot. You can see it's a GPU array, which has an RGBA, well, it's an eight bit RGBA, um, element type. It's got these dimensions, which will match this, and it's backed by um, texture. Is that the right size? Yeah, it probably is the right size. Um, so that's cool. But what I need is the texture itself, because I, I'm in another pass, I want to read from it. Um, so we grab this texture, and then we're going to say sample. And then we're going to set f first pass sampler, which is still in caps, to be this. So grab the first texture, grab the, sorry, grab the texture from the first attachment, sample that, and store it. We've got them. So that's these two. So what we will do now is we will go down here, we will say with FBO bound, and we're just going to, oh yeah, we're going to need to clear as well. And I'm going to put this clear further down for reasons. That will become important later. Right, so now when we draw, we get nothing. Even if we take out this clear, we still get nothing. Because everything we're drawing is being written into this FBO. Which means we're writing it into the texture that's in those slots. Which is really cool. So now we want to um, blit this stuff out again. What I could do is make a... If I want to show it unchanged, I could say blit... And this kernel is just going to return every pixel multiplied by one. So essentially, bit? No. Blit. This will give us no change if everything's working. So, okay. Blit. Uh, first pass sampler. 
And it's not working! Hooray! Cool. Okay, so our shaders are wrong. That's fine. Um, apparently, it, we're returning... In our vertex shader, we're returning a vector 2 instead of a vector 4, which is correct. So we do this. We say continue. And now everything's back. We can comment out the blit. And here we are. Okay, so now this is a good place to... Uh, commit and push. So let's do this. Oh yeah, well, the other thing we'll we'll need to do is to um, go edit the ASD file because now we want to add the kernel file. Upstream is going to be episode sixteen. And we're done. Okay, so that's now available. And hopefully, now if I do edge, we'll be running this kernel, which gives us... Fuck yeah. Okay, that'll work. So this is our edge detection. Apart from a little jankiness in some of the lines, which is actually jankiness in our old implementation, probably due to the resolution of the cones or something else. Who knows? It's not going to be a blocker for us. This is enough for us to start with, which is kind of cool. Um, yeah, did you, uh, Pixel Outlaw says, did anyone else notice in case there are little dips along the edges of the cells there? Yeah, it's weird. I don't know what that is. Um, it could just be, I think what it might be is we're getting, so our cones are fairly low resolution. Um, and then if two of those angles intersect at the right point, we're going to get a little jaggy. Um, Yes. Keep your fluids balanced, people. We're not going back into fluids just yet. <laughs> oh, those fluids. Yes, I was thinking of that terrain problem that I had. <laughs> um, yeah, a balanced diet's just, you know, like this, isn't it? Enough burgers on both sides. Right. Church colored glass could be generated here. Totally. Yeah, maybe that's another another week. Um. <laughs> Rainbow Church. Okay, so what have we got now? We have the lines, which is good. Um, so now we want to, what was the next step? So we have our edges, we have a fly. Be gone. Um, and then we're going to blur it. Well, that's cool. We've already got this Gaussian blur thing right here. So all we need to do now is capture this in an FBO. And then we can blur the result of that. Now, we can't read... Like... We can't read and write into the same texture at the same time. So we're going to create another one of these. And this is... Like, we're going to start seeing that... Once we've got a few of these uh, FBOs and samplers around, it's a bit annoying. And if we change the size of this view, these FBOs and things are going to be the wrong size. We'd need to recreate them. And that's a bit ugly. So it, we really want a better way of working with them. This is how GL works. So this is a problem you would have in normal GL as well. We haven't, we haven't tried to, like we've given you this, the correct behavior. And we've made it as nice as we can while not hiding something. Um, if you go into engines, especially if you look at how Chimera's done things um, in his trial engine, there you define pipelines and it does some awesome little graph search, graph coloring stuff to work out what's the minimum number of textures and FBOs and everything you need to run a pipeline. And it does it all for you, which is kick-ass. And it's something we should probably implement in Keppel as a library later on. Um, <laughs> cool. Right, so. Ugh. But I wanted those things. Let's bring those back. Right, so that's compiled. And let's do the same thing we did here with setf. Make an FBO. Oh, I'm an idiot. Chris. Okay. Um. Did I break something as well? Because that's not moving anymore. 
Hmm. Yes, of course, now the sample is wrong. Ah, fuck. Okay, let's just recreate this. Let's try that again. Um, second pass. We've just leaked some resources as well, but we'll do it live. Um, second pass sampler. An optional uh, garbage collection for GPU resources is something we could look at in the future as well. Uh, but it needs to be optional. I won't... I can't stand the idea of GPU deciding when things will be freed in the general case on the GPU because it has no insight of that. Okay, so we've got these two things. Now we can do the same pattern again. Down here. With FBO bound. Oops, we don't need two clears. How clear do we need it to be? The message is very clear. Right, so we're gonna we're going to read into the second pass. No, yes, we're gonna sorry, we're gonna write into second pass, reading from the first pass. Yes, that's correct. So now again when we compile, everything disappears. And then we call kblit and pass in second pass sampler. And we get everything. That's not what I was expecting. I've done something wrong. Let's see where I'm writing. Um, we're drawing, we're writing into the first pass. We're reading from the first pass, writing into the second pass. Oh, wait a second. Fuck, here we go. <laughs> that's what I need. Okay, so now that's working. It's a good thing we can change things easily, because I'm going to make a lot of mistakes. So, this is blitting. Uh, so we rendered in this first pass, we do edge detection in the second pass, and then we blit out the result. Now what we need to do, according to the instructions, is blur it. So we take our Gaussian. Let's go back and bring up the kernel stuff again. This guy down here. We're going to run this. And it gets a little blurrier. But not much. So I, we want to spread that blur out a bit. So rather than making a big fat blur kernel here, what I'd like to do is just loop a couple of times and blur a few times until it's good enough. And then we'll go with that. Um... <laughs> Wow, there's some. <laughs> there are some things being invented in this chat that I just. I mean, I I can technically repeat all of the words are fine, acceptable words for this kind of stream, but they don't make sense. <laughs> Doesn't have the FBO initialization in the code I pushed. Very good point. Thank you, sir. Let's do that then, and let's. Right, so. Unless first pass, then und passed, one passed. Ugh. That might be okay. Yeah, why not? Best commit messages when you're doing things live. That's what rebase is for. Okay. So now we've got things slightly blurry. But we want to blur them some more. So we get slightly wider. Because the goal here is that we want to get them nice and, blur, uh, nice and wide. So that when we do a threshold, we'll get some thickness. I don't want them to be super, super wide. But we need a little bit of gap between our, um, our cobbles. So, do we need this up anymore? Probably not. So let's go with that. Now we can switch a little faster. So let's make a loop where we flip-flop a couple of times rendering into each thing. So if we do loop for i below 2. So we're going to do two passes. Then we're going to do, and we're going to write from one um, FBO into the next one, and then back again. 
So let's So source FBO is going to be originally the first pass. Yep. Or say source some well, yeah, let's do the full thing. And then destination FBO and destination sampler is going to be second. And this should actually be sampler. Whoops. Right. So we do this. And then this is the, we're reading from the source sampler. And we're writing into the destination FBO. And then we're going to use a thing I learned from Chimera a good few streams ago. So thank you for, to you if you're watching later on. Um, we're going to use rotate to swap these places. So we're going to swap source FBO and destination FBO. Um, we're going to swap source sampler and destination sampler. And if we, when we do that once, um, yeah, so the first time we write from from one into two, let me sh make sure I got this right. Yes, we're going to write from one into two and then two into one. And that will be our two passes. And that means that this will be, oh, wait a second, if I look this up, this is our edge detection pass. I actually don't want to screw with that. Hmm. Okay, one second. Let's uh, see what I just modified up here. We have this. Let's get rid of this default thing here. There we go. Okay. So... We're writing, so yeah, we need to do the edge detection first, and then we're writing into the second pass. So then the source is going to be second, second, and the destination is going to be first, first. And then so two, <laughs> two passes is going to end up um, back in the source again. So it will be this one. So then yes, we can just do cable it down here. We're not doing edge detection here, we're doing our Gaussian, and we can compile. Okay, so that's cool. That got a little bit blurrier. It's a, it's hard to see. It's kind of clear on my end, but I'm sure this isn't coming through very well on the stream. It'll be a bit ob more obvious later when we're doing thresholding. But if I go from 2 to 8, I'm hoping... Did, does that? Can you see that that's a little blurrier than this? And then if I put it up to, say, 12... Uh, it's getting more subtle. I, I'm not sure the difference between 12 and 16 is quite subtle, but this is blurrier. Um, let's see what's going on. I'm obviously pointing at this, but you know. The visuals on the screen. Um, that samples null FBOs. What samples null FBOs? Oh, sorry, Barrett. The PDF uh, was linked at the beginning of the stream. Thank you to those who have relinked it. Um, no, no, it's not a secret. This is something that um, Pixel Outlaw put together for us. Uh, that's why I'm doing it. It's um, I got I got sent a lesson plan, so suddenly I didn't have to do any work. All I have to do is follow instructions, and I, I can do that sometimes. Um, it's getting blurry by the minute. Perfect. Then, yeah, I, you're right. I, I think uh, 16 looks thick enough. So, let's go and make um, the pass that's going to do the thresholding. It'd be kind of cool if we could write just a... Like we're just having to write this one thing to get the entire pipeline. It'd be kind of nice if we just had to write the fragment shader to get the entire pipeline there. So I might copy this macro again and do some funky stuff. Maybe. Yeah. Why not? We've got time. What time is it, anyway? Oh, it's only half eight. Oodles of time. So let's do a defrag shader. This is one of the things I love when we can just go, ah, we need we need X. We'll just 
We'll just throw it in. It'll take a few minutes. So body. Uh, we're going to take away most of this logic. Um, we keep the frag name. We keep the pipeline name. The uh, pass through is from the first one. It's going to be the same. So that's going to be there. We're going to pass. I'm going to reorganize this a little so it's easier to read. Uh, we're going to pass in the body as is to our fragment shader. It would be nice if we could specify these variables names. So let's do uvvar um, sample, sampler var and step var. Val? No, that. Um, and then down here we can do uvvar text, oh no, it's sample var and step bar and just inject it into the code. Cool. And then we get a pipeline and then we get, oh yes, then down here we want step and yeah, actually that, that might be correct already. Dun, 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 dun. Cool. Yeah, that's a good place to start. Def frag shader. Oh, actually, we could call it def frag pipeline is more correct, isn't it? Pipeline. Sweet. And this is going to be called threshold. I like Lisp. Um, oh, yeah, we haven't got um, concurrent uh, hints turned on. Okay, so UV sampler is gonna be called Sam and step is gonna be called step. But our, our thing is very simple. All we're just gonna do is we're gonna sample um, the texture, which is, well, yeah, which is referenced as Sam here, because that's the sampler, um, at UV coordinates. So if we do this, oh, what's going on here? Text is not known, not a known argument keyword. Ah, yes, of course, because now we can decide what these variables are, sorry, what these uniforms are called. We need to make sure these keywords are correct as well. So let's go fix that up. So we can go, um, Sam keyword is symbol name. So we're just gonna intern this into the keyword package. Symbol name of sampler. Oh. Yep. UV keyword is UV something? No. The upload sampler. Oh, step was the other one, wasn't it? Step keyword, which is in the step var. And then we can come down here and we do sampler keyword and step keyword. So if we compile that and then go down and macro expand this and we can check our results. So we get GPU function. We take Sam, Sam and step as uniforms. Um, we get a pipeline. That's cool. Then we get this function that's passing in Sam, which is sampler and step, which is this. Good. That looks like the macro we want. That looks like the, <laughs> the wrong file. There we go. Cool. Here we go. Okay, so now we should be able to swap out blit here for threshold. And everything stays the same. So right now this is a pass through fragment shader. Nothing's happening. We're reading something out of the texture and throwing the result onward. <laughs> oh, I need some context for that one. Someone's, yeah, I mean, you're referencing Katamara Damacy, which means you have my attention because that is just one of the best games ever. Um, I already see code in the future. There's always code in the future. It's just getting it that's the problem. Um, I guess since a shady, you could play uh, many games and programs in the cobblestone vision. <laughs> what would it be? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you could just overlay this on anything. 
Oh, I see. That's where Cobbler Murray Damacy is coming from. Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> Groovy. Okay. Did I miss anything up here? Oh, yeah, quite a bit. <laughs> awesome. All right, so we've got this, and now we need to do thresholding, which basically means we want a step function. We want to go from zero to one immediately, which in GL you do is step, and you give it a threshold. And that's it. Except um, the second value here can be a vector, but I actually want it to be a scalar of some kind. So val. Now we've got to calculate value. So this is the color actually. So let's do color is this. So we sample a color out of the texture. And then let's just say we added together the X, Y, and Z of color. Just a kind of really shitty magnitude. And then we used that as our value. And if it went over 0.1, then it's, then it's max. Let's do this as vec3 so it will be white. And that looks plausible straight away. That's just great. Now what we should be able to do actually is if we mess with our um, blur function here, if we set this down to eight now or four, we can see the lines are getting thinner because that blur is spreading, is like I say blurring things outwards. Oh, not two sixteen, too many. But yeah, that's some nice fat cobblestones. In fact, it's kind of annoying because a lot of them don't join up. We might have to do something about that, but I'm not sure what yet. Let's just see what happens if we set it to four. Actually, it's a bit better at four right now. Let's leave it like this. We can change it. Because, because we're just adding shaders here, we're not losing anything. We can mess with any of these stages at any point. Um, so that's great. But can you see what I mean about this kind of multiple FBOs being set up and used down here? And it's there is a, a sensible flow, and what we're doing isn't complicated, but it's going to get complicated to maintain. And I think we can do better. And it it becomes like a really interesting case of how simple you can make it and what kind of trade-offs you're making when you do that. Yada yada yada. So now we want to add this back to our uh, colored version, if I remember correctly. We've got this, and we want this. Now, th that is white at the moment, which is a bit much. So what we can do is we can pick our grout color. So we say grout is 0 0.4, 0 0.4, 0 0.4. That would give us a nice gray. And then whatever this value is, we just multiply it by the grout color. And now we've got gray, which is cool. Now, what we need to do is pass in the original um, thing we captured, right? Ah, but we've lost that because we've been overwriting it in this stage. So, we're going to want another FBO and another sampler, and my problem just gets larger. But it'll be, you know, it'll be okay. But... In the real world, this would start becoming a bit of a problem pretty quickly. So let's go down here again. Hacky macaque. It will have to do. Actually, I remembered. So we've got this. So now um, let's. Oh. Oh, I see what you were saying earlier. Shit. You're right. I haven't actually implemented this properly at all, have I? Thank you. I sorry. You were completely right. I haven't set the uh, the FBOs here, and I pushed that as well. Smart, Chris. Your people are almost too polite in the chat room. <laughs> who did I not? Who got that right earlier and I completely ignored them? 
Somebody was giggling. Bet it was Jace. Nothing in the code that actually makes the FBOs. Jace wins! Thank you, sir. Sorry about that. Smart, smart, smart. Whoops. Whoops. And I hope that's right now. We'll see. Um... Okay, so now we've got third pass as well. Yep. And what are we going to do with this third pass? So, the first thing we did, like we captured on our third first pass, was the actual Voronoi diagram itself. And we want to combine it with this. So once we've got caught it in first pass, we shouldn't reuse first pass again. So down here we should write into second pass, and then here we should write into third pass. And that's going to flip-flop an even number of times, so it's going to end back up in second pass, which we use down here. So everything should keep on working. Ha-ha! It does! Ha-ha-ha! <laughs> Good. Okay, so that hasn't broken yet, which is progress, but we also now need to pass um the first pass result into this so we need to be able to define additional uniforms which our lovely macro up here doesn't let us do yet so we're going to add this functionality and rest uniforms and we'll just have them in the normal uniform style of um, gpu functions and then we'll take this and down here we add it to our uh, fragment shader which is cool but now we need to be able to upload them as well, which means we need a few more things. We need the names. Uniform names is the first element of each of those arguments. Because the, so the, all of the uniforms are written name type, name type. So the first of that list is gonna be all the names and then the second part is gonna be the types. Then we're gonna need uniform keywords because down here we have to provide the keywords when we're uploading so we're going to make a little lambda um, we're going to go and do this you know what that's a bit ugly let's make a help function that will take x and We'll actually write the, the function correctly. There we go. Now we've got a keyword function. Which we can use here. We can use here. We can use... Actually, we can now... Just call keyword on the uniform names. Not uniforms names, uniform names, there we go. Um, and then lastly, we can come down here. It's a bit much, but we'll get there. Um, we're gonna map. We're gonna make a list. Let's go nap can. A list of all the uniform keywords and the uniform names. We'll compile this, and that was a lot, so we'll just macro expand and see what we ended up with. To start with, it should be exactly the same. We have Sam, we have Step, nothing's changed up here, everything's groovy. We compile it, nothing has changed, but now we should be able to pass in um, an additional uniform and macro expand it. And then we our fragment shader has the uniform. Um, and our upload has Voronoi. Ah, but we need to pass this into this function as a keyword parameter. So, back to the drawing board. Just for one more time, we say here, we do and, key. Well, it's a little more tricky than that, isn't it? We want to do 
when um, when there are additional uniforms we want to cons and key onto the front of the what do we call them the names the uniform names yes yeah that should do it nope <laughs> And if I did variable uniforms, have I done this? Ah, oh, done it in the wrong place. I've done it in def kernel and not in def frag pipeline because I wasn't looking. Down here. Okay. Let's expand this again. And then we we'll see that threshold now takes an, a Voronoi argument, which it passes to the Voronoi keyword argument of this pipeline, which is blah, all there. Okie dokie. Cool. We compile this, we do this, whoops, something said, no, everything's fine, okay. I saw the dreaded unbalanced parentheses there, it's something I see very rarely, okay. Let's have a look. Baggers, you should convert the edge detection colors to all white. I think the black dark cones are hurting the continuity. Very likely. Um, we will we'll do that. Um, these rogue thinner than usual borders. Yeah, it could be related to that, couldn't it? Jesus, Barrett, you're just a wellspring of cobble-related puns. This is uh, terrible, awful, and you should be ashamed, but I know you won't be. Um, Jay's is saying you need to eval um, when calc edge land in kernel list. Thank you very much. That is a good call. Um, Oh yeah, because we've got these, it's kind of ugly that we've got the uses of the kernel macros in the same file as the definitions. Maybe I'll just remove that. Maybe we'll, Really, we should just move these to another file because it's kind of messy anyway. Um, so let's say kernel helpers, oh, kernel macros. Oh, helpers, no, because we, yeah, we'll put the uh, shader in there as well. So yeah, let's do kernel helpers dot lisp. Let's take everything above from here. And then nothing should be using it now. And we can just keep this file for the actual kernels itself. Think about good names another day. Right. I'll kick that over to you, uh, Jay. Sorry I've been breaking things on your machine. I'm kind of aware that we've got a few things to get through and I wasn't sure if we'd get it all done in time, but props to you for trying to um, play the home game. That's, uh, that's respectful. I couldn't keep up with this nonsense. <laughs> I can barely keep up with what's going on now. But we must. So if we go to play with verts, where were we? So we've got this thresholding thing. And now we've got this extra argument. And we can compile it. So down here, where we call threshold, we should see... Mm, stop pointing with your fingers, Chris. There's an argument down here. A keyword argument called Voronoi. And uh, yes, so we can pass that the threshold. <laughs> Voronoi, we can pass in the result of the first pass, which is the first pass sampler. If we do that, nothing goes wrong, which is good. And what we want to do is to make sure that we're getting the thing we expect. We're just going to temporarily mess with the shader to see that we are indeed getting the Voronoi diagram in that sampler, which is good. And now we can say vcol is this. 
And now we need to mix between the two, right? So we've got our grout, um, grout coal, and we can say grout is this. And then our final color is mixing between the two, which is, how do we do the step? Oh, this is the step here, the zero and one. Step valve. So if we do, when it's, when it's one, we want a line. So times step valve grout. Oh no, that's, that's what we're doing here. Okay. So grout call, we can just do this. times one minus step val, we multiply that by v call, and we blew it up. Okay, so there's a difference between a vec three and a vec four. So this is a vec four and this is a vec three. That sounds reasonable. Um, ah, look at that, awesome. Okay, so now we have Famous last words, we're just going to temporarily mess with this code. <laughs> yeah, we call it Keppel. Um, right, so we have some stuff. This is a kind of semi-reasonable approximation of this, right? They've got better colors and things are a little more round, but, you know, close enough. It'll do. So now is where things get funky, because... Here, what time are we at? Oh yeah, we're nearly nearly done with the first hour and we're at this stage, so I'm quite happy with that. Here is where they go and select a bunch of stuff, like select all the grout and put noise on it. I want to turn this back into 3D again, because that would be cool. Um, which means I want to make a big old lattice. I want to use this stuff as the texture. And I also want to add, excuse me, height information. Because one of the nice things we could do is if we were to use, where is our, if we look at color, this guy, and if we look at val, which was the sum of all those things, and if we take that as a vec3, because it's easier to work with. Now here we could say the low points are white and the high points are the actual cobblestones. But that means the zero is high and the one is low. So what we'll actually do is do one minus, I'll do it here actually, one minus val. Now this is a height map that we could use along with our colors to displace a grid. And then we should have cobblestone grid thing, right? That sounds semi-reasonable. So what we can do is say final color is this. So that's the actual, now we'll call it cob color. Cob coal. And then the final color is cob coal. And so yeah, at the moment, it, this is a vector four. We don't want that. I'm gonna take this down to a vector three. V coal, which is here, will swizzle down to just X, Y, and Z. So this result now is gonna be a vector three and the last thing we're going to do is put the height, and the height is going to be that. Except we don't need it to be a vector three; we just do this. So we're going to store this in the in the alpha channel or the W component, and we're going to use this on the next pass for height, and that will be pretty cool. And there's some there's some janky stuff but we're only really like all this garbage down here but we're really just looking for the general idea can we get the idea across in a couple of hours if we can do that then the software we're using is is okay it would be great if we could get it across in 10 minutes but we'll get there that will be an interesting thing in general is live coding this is technically live coding but it's fairly low level live coding um high level live coding 
Like what are the highest level primitives that you can invent for graphics, which don't take away power so you can keep your expressiveness, <laughs> but allow you to work with nice, big, safe blocks so we don't get the kind of fiddliness we do here. How do you, yeah, how do you make that? Um, I don't think it's been done satisfactorily before, or I haven't read enough. Both of those things are possible, um, but I would really like to play with it. So that's, that's kind of, that's ongoing project. Can we use Keppel to make something that's higher level and awesome for experimentation? Yeah, it says uh, thin grout down here. There's some jankiness. We'll work on that. Also as well, our blur is not exactly brilliant. So uh, there's going to be cases where things are nearly vertical. No, no, that should be okay. Um, yeah, it, it, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. We can fix it in post. Um, what do we do now? We need to... We basically need to do the kind of red rendering we've been doing other episodes, right? We had a shader over there for rendering stuff in 3D. Like with, um, oh, what am I saying? Um, taking normals into account and all that stuff. Actually, we're not gonna have normals available. Hmm, what should we do? What should we do? Oh, well, we'll just, we'll just hack it up and we'll see. We'll see, right. First thing we're gonna need is a grid. So we need a lattice of some sort. Um, da, 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 da. how are we going to do that? So, let's just go find out what the functions were. Actually, yeah, we've got the assets thing here. So, let's just um, make up something here. Can I spell lattice right yet? Was it this or was it with two T's? Ah, uh, it's with two T's. Okay. Um, I should have done this first. Ooh. No. Wait, what? I thought I'd fix the spelling. What is going on? Huh. Am I on a branch or something? Yes. Okay, so maybe I haven't pushed those name changes into Quicklisp yet. What? Okay. I'll need to make a note of that later. One second, I'll go and write this on the whiteboard now or I'm going to forget. Let's, uh, yeah, so we're going to make a mesh. We're going to call Lattice GPU arrays. It takes a width and a height. So, width, width, height, height, uh, segments. So, I'll just do X and X segments. Let's move this down to new line. That'd be nicer. X segments is X, and Y segments is Y. Um, is there anything else? Normals and texture chords. Yes, we want both of those. Okay, so we will have normals, but they'll be incorrect because we're going to displace them. Eh, okay. We'll have to fudge some normals. That's not a problem. We've done that before. Nothing else should have to change. Ah, spellings, man. Really not my strong point. Uh, width, height, X and Y is something we need to pass in here. So... Width is going to be, let's do 100. Actually, we're not working on that bigger scale. Let's just do, okay. do 100, do 100. Width, height, which is really depth. Never mind. <laughs> X. Uh, let's say we've got 500 in both directions. So five division per unit. That should be okay. Yeah, it'll be fine for this. It'll be fine. Stop worrying about details, Chris, and just make it. Um, we have to X and Y, that's going to be used as the key. Okay, so now we've got a helper function which will let us make a lattice. So we can just say lattice. 
And it goes boom! Okay, right, that's that's not brilliant. Oh dear. That does not look like an index, correct. That's because the X and Y segments are... Oh. <laughs> I gave them as floats. But, um... Oh, wait, what the fuck? Oh, okay, no, I'm in the wrong file. This is just, if you ever need to simulate me, just to have that recording on loop. Huh? What the fuck? Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Yeah, that's uh, that's me forever. 500. 500. There we go. That's great. And we should be able to do two of them. And if we do EQ on both of those, they are the same. Which means it's getting cached, which is good. So now we've got a lattice and we need to draw it. So let's go back to our playwithverts.lisp. And once again, we need to store this in a texture because we want to use it. So we are going to take this and we're going to wrap it in the same thing as normal, which is a with FBO bound. We're reading from both the second pass and the first pass sampler, which means the only other FDL we have handy is the third pass. Um, so we'll use that. We'll do clear in here. That's. Now, Everything disappears, which is what we expect. And we have to draw the grid itself. So we have some rendering code already. So let's see what we've got. This is what we're using for the... Um, what we're using for the cones in our Voronoi thing. The only thing is we swatched out... Sw swatched out? Yes. We switched out our fragment shader um, for something really simple, this pass-through fragment shader. So really, we can reuse this and we can restore our old fragment shader and then we should be able to make a pipeline which can draw things with shadows and all that kind of crap. So that'll be, that'll be good. That'll be a good place to start. So, um, where will we find that? We could just check this out. Where am I? So let's, um, hmm, do I want to commit this yet? It's kind of a sad thing to commit because there's nothing on the screen. Um, nada. Um, and if I just, let's look at an earlier episode. What were we doing in episode 14? We probably had something going on there, right? Episode 14 dot, oh yeah, it's just episode 14. We look at the renderer there. Oh, here we go. Yeah, there we go. There's a nice big fragment shader. That will definitely do us for the basics. <laughs> Let's check out episode 16 again. There it is. And open the render file again. Then we're back down to our tiny fragment shader. And this is now going to be um, shadow frag sh stage or something or lattice frag stage maybe so now if we compile that nothing freaks out we make another pipeline called the lattice pipeline as we can see like we have nice primitives but still as we start writing projects things are getting big enough that it's a little hard to manage and as we're like, what we want to do is just code quickly, but there's still things we're having to think about. Which is necessary, but you know, there is room for improvement. Let's shrink that down a little. Is this uh, text on the left hand side bearable? Because I'd like to keep it at that size just for now. Okay, so the way we did rendering for stuff before 
is we defined a thing. Yes, we had this abstraction, didn't we? Like game objects. Um, we could just make a thing and uh, then it had an update method and stuff like this and a draw method. So, um, that is uh, cobbles. That's what they are. Cobs? Cobbles. Sure. Ground is now going to be cobbles, which is And the draw method we're going to overlook, override as well. Override, overload. What's the terminology in common list for specifying a new method? Um, we will get where's this is interesting as well. Our sampler is going to be slightly different. Oh, we've got all kinds of hackery we're going to end up doing here. Let's get rid of that for now. This is one of these things when I push it, I know it's going to break stuff because this is an earlier file. It's going to get a little bit ugly, but we'll, we will endure. Um, let's define the cobbles. Let's make cobbles, sure. The stream is actually going to be our lattice. We've got an update method and our draw method, rather than calling some pipeline, is going to call the lattice pipeline. But most other things are the same. We do have a scale and a model world and a color. But we also have that um, thing where we upload... Wait a second. Hmm. So normally we, we used to provide a albedo and specular map. We're not going to be doing specular today. So we can remove anything related to specular. So specular is gone. And specular is gone from there, which means... And specular is already commented out here, so that's fine. Ambient diffuse, yada, yada, yada. Specular map, you are gone. Um, and then when we're drawing this, we've got to pass up an albedo texture, which in this case, hacky hacky hackiness, is um, third pass sampler. Oh man. But it'll all be worth it. Unknown keyword argument. Why? Um, let us... Oh, shit, yeah, good point. One second. Um, this was meant to be for cobbles, not for everything under the sun. Continue. I'm actually just temporarily going to uh, put this guy back here. I want to see something. It's disturbing not seeing anything going on over there. Right, um, we have a draw in render. There is an albedo in our lattice frag state. Ah, oh. Chris. In our lattice pipeline, we used the um, simple frag. We use basically we use the wrong fragment shader. So vec3, vec3, vec2, that is correct. Lattice frag stage. Okay, now when we compile this, it shouldn't compare about albedo, but it does compare about... Compare? I am losing the power of speech. This is not a good sign. We've still got 45 minutes to go, at least. I might overrun a bit today. We'll see. Um, okay, campos, albedo, and this jazz. Should be fine. Um, I'm actually going to take all of these and add them here as well because we're going to need all of them no, 
this will be camera, just regular camera, yeah. Okay, let's see what if we get away with it. Who knows? Now, up till now, we've been rendering everything in things, which is a big old list of all the things currently in the world, including this ground, which we don't see because it's under here somewhere and uh, all these v-cones but we also have a variable that just contains the v-cones and as that's what we're interested in for the Voronoi we're gonna just render that um, then we are going to come down here into our lattice when we make cobbles we are going to we will add it to things just because it seems to be the right thing to do. Cobbles is res. Okay, so now, oh, screw it, let's just do it. Let's do make cobbles and see what happens. Make cobbles. Okay, yes, that creates, right now we are still doing this. The variable thing is unbound, oh no. Right, oh yeah, because we're still, ah, idiot. Okay, this needs to be cobbles. Oh, oh shit, really? Oh, say that worked, okay. Right, so. I'm going to put this down here because they're associated. I'm going to, we actually, we're rendering to in two different ways here. We've been using the current camera um, to say which camera we're viewing here, but we want all of our Voronoi stuff to be done with the camera, which is in perspective. So that was camera one, I believe. We, we can just go, oh, we can just evaluate that actually. If, uh, if I just hover over it, and look down in the uh, mini buffer down here, we can see that camera one is the perspective camera. What the fuck? Why is camera one a perspective camera? Is camera zero the uh, orthographic camera? Good to know. Okay, right, so yes, then, um, and what does update camera do? Yeah, update, so, yeah, I think we can leave update current camera like that. It's a bit, eh, it's all a bit weird, but we'll see. Okay, so we're going to render into the orthographic camera here. Or render using the orthographic camera. And we say draw thing. Um, it's a good point. When we say draw thing, what happens? We go to these V cones. Ah, uh, yeah, it's not worrying about the camera in draw specifically because that's all handled here in the upload uniforms for cam. Okay, that's, I'm fine with that basically. That bit's okay. And then when's the next time we need to worry about camera? It is down here. Ah, okay, yeah, our draw method is not, oh yeah, this, um, ah. Getting confused by my own hackiness. Um, the cobbles is specifically referencing camera one, which is the perspective camera, which is that. So this gives us our lattice. And, uh, oh, <laughs> oh, that's strange. I'm looking at the cones and rendering that oh god now i've rendered everything <laughs> it's all wrong okay what ah 
This is what you get for dicking around rather than doing it properly. Okay. Let's see why I'm getting this. It's going to be down to current camera, so let's grab current camera and see where we're using it. Update current camera, that's the only place. Anyway, let's quickly ch check chat because I've been ignoring you for a, a while. Um, hey, cool. Yeah, Van Lazer's over in Romania, people in New Zealand. This is cool, man. Love like subtypes. I know he's over in, uh, well, not very far from here. No, he's in Norway. Um, <laughs> Grab for the count. Oh, the uh, yes, the the default position for the um, for the camera. Let's sort that out. Okay, I, I'm. I'm a little bit confused, but it's my own fault for making this messy. So yes, the orthographic camera is camera, and camera one is uh... yes. Okay, all oh, right. Yeah, this is update should be camera one. Okay, and now I should be in control of this view. Yeah, here we go. We need to speed this up because it's deadly slow. But the answer to your question, Jace, is. Something like, right, we're going to set up the position of the camera to be 0, 20, 0, so we're up above. And then we're going to set the rotation of that camera to be something else. Yeah, we're going to get the x-axis and rotate around it minus 90 degrees. And that will give us that. Okay, so this bit should have been in... <laughs> Uh, this. this is what you get for trying to follow along at home. I am really sorry. It's, uh... Here we go. So that sets the position and the rotation of camera. You gonna be okay with that, Jason? Do you want me to push that now? Um, actually, it's probably a really good point to push, right? Um... Because it's... Things are getting hairy. In fact... Th and, the, and the reason is because I've been hacking around with this live. There are things in um, this file. Which are now referring to... Th oh, sorry. No, there's... Um, where is it? No, yeah, there's there's stuff here. Where is it? Chris, where have you put it? Third pass sampler. We're referring to third pass sampler here, but it's defined in um play with vert. And so that's a bit shitty. And we could move this, just move this into the other directory. Um and I might do that just so we can push. Like, I can leave this here. But, I mean, either way, it's pretty ugly. Um, so what I'll do, Jace, is I'll push this. If you want to pull and try and fix it up and send me a PR, that would be kick-ass. And I can accept that on the stream or we can do it later. Not a problem. Um, but I, I am conscious of the time. So I'm a bit, uh, a bit keen to... Force push! <laughs> and we're doing it live. Living with madness. Okay, so... We've got this now. We have... Um, our diagram. Let's see what we can do with it. Render. And we actually want to screw with things in the vertex shader as well. So we want to... Actually, we should have a whole new, um, let's just do, what am I doing? Okay, easy boy. Render lattice.lisp, because things are getting a bit crowded. We'll take 
this. Called the lattice vert stage, so we can have one just for that because it's easier to hack on. Like we can consolidate things later, basically. Um, it's easier just to have these separate and work out what makes sense then. That horrible yellow line is the white space detection going on. I'll just shove this here for a little bit of indication of where we are. Okay. And let's have a lattice vert stage and recompile everything and we're still running. Good. Okay. So what, what do we know? We know that we are passing in um, the albedo and it has this color stuff, it's a bit flickery as well. That's really jank. I don't like that. I wonder what it is. It's probably in the original, but... Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll get to that later as well. Stop worrying about the little things. Let's get the fundamentals done. This shader doesn't just... Sorry, this uh, texture doesn't just have the color in it. It also has that W component, which should be the height. So if we pull this in, in the vertex stage, and we have our UV, which we do have, then what we should be able to do is get the um, height, which is going to be the W component of the of sampling the texture at the UV position. So if we do albedo at UV, we should have height that will compile, and then we can say um, pos is pos plus zero height zero it's hard to tell what's happened so let's put a multiplier on this that looks like we might have something going on between there yeah that looks like divots there's some ugly gray triangles brilliant man i really need to work on the free cam as well but now we've got some displacement What's weird though is just like, uh, I mean, there's a, there's, a, there's a lot weird about this, let's be fair. Let's just bring up rendering of the cobbles. Cobbles, 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 cobbles. Here we go. What have we got for ambient light? Where's the ambient? Oh yeah, there it is. It's just a bit low. There we go, that's a bit better. But we also want shadows, which means we need normals. Um, I think in Nineveh we have some function for grabbing the normals. Nineveh, um, Nineveh.normals, really? That would be, that would be hilarious. Simple sample normals, let's go look at it. Yeah, it just looks... Okay, it takes a function which is going to return a float given a vector 3. Hey, a second. Let's see how this works. Oh no, okay, we can do this one. Okay, so given a vector 2, it needs to return a float. That's interesting. Yeah, that would be like sample texture or something. But that sounds like there would be closures or variable capture or something. I'm not sure how this will work. We can find out. I'm sure we used this in an earlier episode though, so I want to I, I wanna use it. Um, we take a position and an offset. Yeah, this, I mean, this makes sense, right? Oh, it's interesting, though. Let's see if, uh, just fuck it, let's see if we can use it. Um, wait a second, though. The idea is that we get a normal. So... Oh yeah, this is going to return. Of course, yes. We don't declare the return types because there's, you know, <sighs> type inference. So that's all right. Okay. Fine. Let's see what happens. We Actually, we're really good to expand on, on this. Um, we'll have to do that another day as well. So. Up in here. We've got normal. Uh, 
that this isn't going to be useful. What we need first is a function, some func, I'll just func, that's going to take a vector 2 of some kind. So I guess that's going to be uv. Um, and it's going to return a float. Well, that's this, isn't it? This is this height function here. I compiled. Good. Okay. So then maybe normal is going to be as simple as simple sample normals func uh, the current position which is uv and the offset which is the distance to the next one or the step um, that sounds like something we're going to have to upload yeah it'd be really nice to actually just be able to make things like uh, the current viewport size just available in this bloody um stage in general in the in the fragment stage sorry the fragment stage in the vertex stage i wonder if those variables are available anywhere it's probably in glsl and i just didn't know about it uh, anyway yeah we need to work that out we can worry worry about that another time chris focus on the fucking problem we're so close maybe maybe we're close who knows uh, <laughs> okay um oh no offset is float okay oh that's just okay so it's just yeah it's assuming a square i guess Maybe that's a bad idea for it to assume it's a square. That is probably a bad idea. Noted. In fact, that will be a yes. It is pretty bad that it assumes that's a square. Maybe we fix it <laughs> right now, because otherwise we are going to get weird results. Maybe that accounts. For, oh, that could count for some other issues actually that I saw way back. So um, let's make a macro that does this. And then we can just use it again. Oh, why did I put the... <laughs> oh, well. It's going down as well, but, you know, it'll do the job. And it, this offset is going to be like macro, y, save, okay. Right. There we go, simple sample normals might be fixed. So now we just need to know the step size. Hey, hey we've got a function for this as well. This is going to be a vec2. Symbol uv is undefined. Is it? Oh, yeah, it is. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah, and we're compiling this too soon as well. Um, normal is now going to be made after this. And what else? It's going to include step. Is that okay? You people fine with this? Why are you still running? That's surprising. Okay. Oh yeah, I guess it's just reading. It's just going to be zero, zero for now. That's quite a nice default. Step, 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 step. Where will we calculate you? Okay, so we need to go wherever we're calling the latter stuff. So draw cobbles, which is here. And we need to pass in a step. And the step is going to be whatever that other function was in our kernel helpers. No, was it here? Oh no, there was just a bit of code. And this is in two places as well, so, and we're going to use it in a third, so it's time for another helper. Calc, step, oh, what a messy project we are in. Who cares? Stop sweating about that, otherwise we'll never get any experiments done. I was watching... Um, really inspiring video uh, recently, which was... One second. Oh, what the... Sorry. I've screwed something up. I will tell you about the inspiring thing, but not yet. I have to break all of my code first. Interesting. Okay. That might be better. Yeah, so I was watching a video of um, Devin Townsend doing a two-hour make an like make it made a fucking track like it made a proper full song in two hours and it was ridiculously impressive, and just showed the combination of 
tooling and dealing with one's self-doubt while developing and all this kind of stuff and trying to let things go and just play and experiment, don't worry if it's cheesy, all that kind of crap. It was really inspiring. Search for Devin Townsend track in two hours or whatever. It's kick ass. Uh, dude seems just like an amazing guy. Right, so now we've got Calc Step. We're so close, and what time is it? Oh, it's 35. We got oodles of time. I should have left those parens there. They're handy parens. Now, actually, that looks like we got shadows. We got some shadowy kind of things going on. Let's. But the height. It's interesting. One second. It probably is going to be affected by that multiplier, right? Because um, we're multiplying the height of the terrain, but we're not multiplying the other thing. Oh, that's interesting. One second. Uh, da, 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 where was it? Not in Kernel Helpers. It was in Render Lattice. We are here. This is the thing that gives us that we pass to simple sample normals, but it doesn't have access to the height multiplier. How about we just say height factor is something we pass in to our shader could do that or again we could just be lazy and go <laughs> and go do it the same as it is down there so 10 oh black and hell that's uh that seems backwards you know but yeah that seems completely reverse hmm what happens if we do minus 10 <laughs> it looks somewhat better Okay, let's, uh, oh man, the camera's too slow as well. Why do people use Unity? Because it has a great standard library and everything's not being hacked together every stream by, like, by some Muppet. Um, right. Ah, oh, and this is the thing we've done a dozen times as well. Great stuff. Which is to, uh, have the modifier. Wait a second, have we got the browser up? We should have the browser up. We did this code the other week. Uh, see you, baggers. What's happening in chat while I rant to myself? Also need to make the cones went ahead and added both to reset. Good man, Jace. Uh, push code works if I create the cobbles. Nice. Yes, you would have to do that as well. Um, but we're getting so close. Look, cobbles. 3D cobbly type things. Kind of. It might be kind of cool to get the colors that were in the original document and shove them in there as well. Um, actually, no, maybe it's just... Oh, fuck. I don't know what's going on. I don't know. doesn't matter. If it convinces us, then we're fine. Let's go to an earlier episode. Because we definitely messed with the camera. Yeah, here we go. This update function might suck less. Yeah, now I can move quicker. All right, though. So, other than looking like garbage, it looks really good. <laughs> now I'm quite happy with that. That's cobbly things. Oh yeah, we have the noise situation. Oh man, I really don't like that. Um, the hackiness in the normals, though. That minus ten shit just feels. Bleh. So if the light's coming from here, this actually makes sense. Maybe I was just confused by what was going on, but. Oh, and that lovely bleeding of colors down there. It is a fantastic mess. But it is working. <laughs> Which ain't bad. So what could we do? We could shove some... Um, so the last step in this... Let's... Uh, what could we do? Let's take these colors. Let's throw them on there as our random colors. Uh, unless you guys just want us to keep really stupid colors on there, then I think we might throw in these colors. And then it might be time just to throw it in a bit of noise based on height. Which we can totally do. That'll be fine. Actually, as soon as we've got time, we can have some more coffee. What time are we now? 40. We've got 20 minutes. Sweet. This is all bonus time. I say we're essentially... I think we've proved our point for the stream, which is we got to... We got... 
we got through this PDF and kind of did what it said. But noise is the last bit. So we'll do that. Um, but I don't think we have to worry about, because the last stage down here is making things look beveled. We don't have to do that because we've got, we've got this. It's 3D-ish. What more could you want? I mean, what you could do as well is put a uh, Gaussian blur on the, or Gaussian blur, whatever. How do I say this? I only read it in books. Uh, on the height values themselves. Just blur those and then we'll get a bit of beveling going on. But we'll soften it out. There's a lot of things we could do, man. I don't like that flickering. I hope that was from the source image. I suppose we can find out, actually. Let's uh, play with verts. Go down here and instead of drawing the cobbles, um, we can just do K blip first pass? Yeah, first pass sampler. Yeah, there's the flickering. There is some shit going on in there. So, whatever I've done is something stupid here, not something stupid in the last stage. So if I just fix that, then we'll fix the other one. That's cool. Oh, I love that we can just jump back to this and then go to... And then go like this. That's cool. And that was made out of cones. Oh yeah, one of the things actually I was... Because my original way... Of, yeah, let's talk about that quickly. The original way I was thinking of doing this... If I can get my doodler up. Um, Gromit. MPX. Yes. Um, was we had all these cones, right? Well, I thought... Like, I, I was thinking, oh yeah, there's all these cones like this. What we could do is we could just chop the top off. Not at an angle, but you know, like if I could draw like across this way. We could chop the top off and then we get the divots here, which will be our grout and all that kind of stuff just happens automatically. But I was wrong because some of the cones are very far apart. And some of the cones are pretty much on top of each other. Which means where the grout is, is completely different for different cones. Um, which means even if you chop the, the heights off the same, you then have to normalize this part first and that sounded like it was going to be slow, so... Just decided to stick to the PDF and see what we could come up with. And it's going okay. I'm, I'm, I'm not completely displeased with this. And that English for, I'm pretty happy. Um, so what else do we want? Let's add some noise. Yes, we wanted noise. I haven't actually used the noise functions in Nineveh since... Oh, for, for a while now. Like, since we did it on the early streams. Uh, Perlin noise takes P? Oops. Takes a position, which is a back 2, and it's going to return... Um, Got some value, I guess. Whoops. God damn it, Chris, what are you doing? We're running out of caffeine. Um, so let's, yeah, let's let's just start messing around with this to begin with. We'll do um, noise is Perlin noise UV. And we'll take noise and we'll return that as the color. Now there was a reason for this. <laughs> I'm going to try and remember it. And it was that I think the Perlin noise functions requires requires two random numbers per point. I thought it returns two random numbers per point. I thought the fast hash. Hmm. Yeah, that's something a little funky. Oh yeah, that's just a float. Oh, that's kind of weird as well then. Back three noise. Okay. That's a little odd, but um... Times 10. Okay, that's what I was expecting. Good. Right, so now we can do higher frequency and we'll get high frequency noise, which is excellent. But yes, this is this is where we're going. We can actually go higher than this. Let's just keep going up until we get something that's kind of bitty. 
which is good, something like that. And then we are going to um, actually what we kind of want to do is add this to the height, right? Um, so we don't want to affect the color of the output. What have I done? Oh yeah, we've got this empty binding here. We'll take noise and we'll go up to somewhere up here. Where do we calculate our lighting? Okay, so this is the normal. Ah, yeah, so we kind of want to affect the normal in some way. Um, oh, what should we, should we just do something really gross? Let's just, if we just add the noise to the normal. Whoa, that will hate that. Yes, it will. Uh, VEC3. Oh, that's awful. Um, yeah, that would affect that. Oh, man. I don't know. Maybe we could just get away with uh, adding some adding some speckle on it. Maybe we, oh yeah, or we could just do this in, you know, in the uh, in the vertex shader, it'll be a lot lower resolution, but you know, who cares? Um, can we get away with this? Okay, let's have a look. It's a bit funky, but we can. Okay, so there we're displacing the height, but because we're not affecting the, uh, because we're not affecting the, what is it? Ah, the normal, then we're getting problems. So let's make this a separate function. Bump for UV. There's a vec2, not long to go. Let's do this. Is this? Then we'll just add bump UV. Bump UV. Now that's not look like it's uh, responding actually. Vi. Maybe the multiplier wants to be different in different places. Let's have a look. Let's put the height down here. Noise is this. Come on, we're so close. We just need to hack this into shape. And... Yeah. Something like this. Okay, I think, I think that'll do us. <laughs> Shitty noise on top of weird cobbles. Uh, maybe we'll do some random colors in there as well. But what should be cool is actually at any point, oh man, will this work? Do I want to do a reset? Like how much am I going to screw up if I do a reset right now? Uh, um, probably a lot of things. Oh man, but it would be cool to fix those colors. Oh, we can just loop through and change all the colors. Wait a second. So if we look at V cones, they're all here. Cool. We've got all those. We want to change all the colors. Let's take the like the uh, first one of V cones. 
and then hopefully this has a color. No, it's not that. Well, let's just look at whatever it is. Let's inspect it. And it has a color slot. So maybe the, the slot was actually called color. What do you know? So it was. Okay, so let's go and take this. Do we have a color picker or anything in this? Probably not. Um, was the good pixel outlaw so good as to tell us the colors? No, but that was reasonable. But I want those colors. Those are exactly the colors I want. If we do a um, print screen, will that work? I don't think that's no, no, there's no image to. Put GIMP down here. Oh man, that is too small. Um. <laughs> Tools, come on, is there a screenshot tool in GIMP or something like that? Yeah, I, I would use that, but because I'm using, um, what's this called? Stump. It doesn't have the uh, screenshot tool thing straight away. But what we can do is I think I may have put one in. Let's have a look. If I go to my stump RC and hope I have any passwords in here. Screenshots. Take screenshot. Oh, it's just called screenshot. Cool. Yes, I've done that. Um, so if I bring up that PDF and then do, what is it? Screenshot? Yeah, cool. And then I go back into GIMP and I go and open the desktop and there's a screen grab. Hopefully it's our one. Yes. Okay. So we will crop. Fuck it. We don't need to crop. Why bother cropping? Let's do this. What is that color? And can I copy it in a sensible way? Oh, don't fight me again. We're so close now. Uh, let me note this down somewhere. We've got 222 and 212 and 195. We've got, which one was that? That was the pale one. We've got the, really? We can't do the gray in the meantime? Sure. Okay. Not now, GIMP. 174, 174, 173. Sure. 174, 174, 173. Close enough. And we've got the brown guy down here, which is... Um, 189, 166, 127. Bam. Those are our colors. Hackathon is nearly complete. We don't need the PDF itself anymore. We're so close. Um... Let me just jiggle some screens around. I want the right one in the right place. Okay, actually, we don't need anything else. We will take this. Come on now. List. Oh, do not test me, child. I am so close to success. I don't want to lose now. Okay, so we've got some colors. Um, we want to loop for um, V in V cones. Do setf color for V to be. Um, so we got Alexandra. That means we should have a random element. And I've never used this before, so it better fucking work. Um, of this. No! Fuck you! That's not the right thing. <laughs> They're all grey. Why are they all grey? Ah, oh, god damn it. Okay. So, element. 
of x. Random. Is it three or two is going to give us the right thing? Oh, wait. What? Oh, maybe it's doing the right thing. What am I screwed up here? What did I do? Do the values need to be normalized? Shouldn't be. Originals weren't. Come on, we got four minutes left. Ah, I'm, I'm happy to overrun. We're gonna get this. We're gonna get this to look <laughs> like whatever this is. Um, color. Where was color of cones? Right. We make a cone. Set its position. Oh, sorry, you are right. Yeah, of course it's random color. Ugh. Okie dokie. Map car. <laughs> I know computers, damn it. Right, uh, we will do V3. Um, we should just be able to get it away with a um, divide by scalar, right? By 255. Is that right? No. There we go. That was what we're looking for. Oh. Ah, but of course. Because of the colors. Floaty colors. Because of the colors emerging then are. This is what you guys were saying earlier on. I should have listened. Why didn't I listen? Okay, so the result of the edge detection needs to be just white. Huh. Okay, how are we going to do this? Um, well, we do the Gaussian, we do the blur there, and when it comes in, um, we do this. So do we need to make it white before we do the blur, or can we get away with that around the thresholding? Because the similarity here is obviously causing the problems for the depth? Hmm. Might just have to go back for stupid colors. The edge detection won't work for side-by-side -side stones. Yeah. No, of, co of course, of course, you're right. Yeah, there is going to be no detection for this. So, as nice as it would be to have these colors, uh, we're just going to say, fuck it. <laughs> go back to what we had. Um, because it's easier. Yes, there we go. Okay, so crazy cobbles. Um, that's well, that's been educational to me. I think. Look at that. We're one minute before ten in old European time, and we have a thing that roughly approximates the thing we were going for. Uh, it may be glitching out a bit, but that's due to the Voronoi rubbish. That was cool. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Any questions, any thoughts, any shouts, any any anything? And uh, I will I will push this now, even though, as Jace has pointed out, there will be problems with it in its current state. And um, we can fix that up later. Awesome. Ah, yeah, so that's that probably accounts for some of the problems we're seeing. Actually. Anyway, cool. So, um, mapping coloring algorithm with four plus colors to rest. Yeah, it'd be, we could, I mean, we could just have it color, like once the positions are set, work out colors so nothing conflicts. It's, it's an interesting problem. 
Um, yeah, it's solving the four color map problem. Awesome. Um, color a map with four colors so that no country has similar map colored neighbors. Yeah, the uh, the graph coloring problem comes up a lot actually. It's pretty cool. It was an enjoyable episode. Thank you, Pixel Outlaw. Oh, I mean, oh, I had like Pixel Outlaw says, yes, this was an enjoyable episode. It was your lesson. It was your episode. So, um, yes, thank you once again for doing that. That was really cool. Um, what I'm interested with, like, obviously is, uh, despite things being very hacky, just me throwing shit everywhere to get things done, there are some things here which could be easier to write. Especially when we get into cases where we're flip-flopping between FBOs, when we're resizing textures, I think we can consolidate all of this and all of this into a single macro that will give us an object that we can redefine on the fly, that we can pass new variables into and it'll reconfigure itself. And I think we might do that next week. Um, the other thing we could do next week is doing um, something like curl noise or just general flow noise and some particle systems. I'm not sure what's taking my fancy more right now, but um, that's where it is. Uh, yeah, so that's probably where it's, but yes, thank you. Thank you, Pixel Outlaw. This was good fun. A nice challenge. Uh, <laughs> told you it'd be a load of cobblers. Thank you, Barrett. Uh, <laughs> I'm just saying I'm looking, to, looking into fixing the slice support in live support. Hey, that'd be really cool. Um, it only mostly works. I can believe that. I haven't run Sly in so long. Um, I just looked at the code and kind of guessed based on how slime works. There's a new series of Lisp videos on YouTube to follow. Oh, Adam Smasher. Yes, I think I was watching those. Um, yes, he's starting to do the uh, paradigms of, uh, Paradigm of Artificial Intelligence videos. That will be cool. So yes, if you're in the chat, check that out. Or if you're not, um, yeah, we got to start linking to the chat logs. Because I think Shin's bot has been in here. Um... Okay, simple fix but messes with the architecture you set up. Yeah, send me a PR and I'll refactor it into something that works for both. Baggers, you could just add a pink or black granite color and then color the color map algorithm. Yeah, we can we can do some things. We're, do, we're doing some very dumb stuff early on in this process that we could totally fix. Um, also, we could... Oh, there's so many things we can fiddle with this, but... It's close enough to the idea that I'm all right with it, I think. Um, yeah, I think that's us. Thank you so much for coming down. This was a blast. Um, I will relink that um, charity post for those who weren't at the beginning. Um, if you can help the folks in Cassisi out, it will be really useful. I will guarantee that the people who are organizing this uh, fund are real they are not skimming your money off and it is going to the right people um i've seen it work on the ground and is a special place to be but yeah there's that i think that's all thank you so much for watching and i will see you next week with whatever the hell we're doing then ciao ciao